Are you looking for a podcast that's just a little babadookish? Well, then you must be thinking of another podcast. Oh! Good evening, Kelsey. Good evening, Robert. How are you? I have a story for you. Oh, oh shit. Let's go. Okay. So do you remember I was going to a wedding last weekend? Yes, I do. Okay. So I went to On this wedding. On a day of days. Well, that's a whole other story. Yeah. But, so we go to this wedding and it's a wedding where like I know the groom pretty well, but I don't know any of the groom's friends and I don't okay. know any of the bride's family or friends or even the bride really. So I was like, okay. I felt kind of on the outs, which, you know, it's whatever. But so, so we go to this wedding and it's an outdoor wedding in September, which is always a gamble in Texas. You know, it's either going to be yeah. like a hundred degrees or it's going to be like 50. And it was, it was like 95. So yeah. Um, so not warm, great. not great. But um, so we go and we're like walking up to the pews and we're looking for just anybody who looks familiar to sit next to or anybody who looks like they also don't belong so that we can kind of not belong together. Okay. <laughs> and so Richard sees this guy that he kind of remembers from high school and we're like, okay, let's just go like wander over there. And we sit down at the very, very back. So we're like at the, there's yes, it's a, always the back, always the back. It's a really, really small venue because it was a pretty small wedding anyway. So, uh, I mean, it was like maybe 50 people there. And okay. uh, so, yeah, we're just sitting at the back, which is like six or seven pews back. And um, the aisle is extremely long. So it's not even an aisle technically. I guess it's more of a sidewalk situation. But like it comes okay. over this little bridge and kind of meanders up and goes all the way up to a little pavilion where they were going to have the ceremony at the altar. So anyway, we're sitting there just kind of staring around waiting and then the music starts and the procession starts to come you know up the up the so-called aisle and as this is happening it's a pretty long fucking aisle so like we're we're just kind of waiting for the people to get there and the first thing to come down the aisle (laughs) was this like horrifying like the size of my hand like not i'm not exaggerating i am not exaggerating okay A, a spider a tarantula the, si- the size of my hand was this, this an- the flower girl <laughs> so it's an outdoor wedding it, it, it takes place like on a like a farm it's a ranch it's i think it's a ranch it's just like said, it takes place <laughs> it sounds so <laughs> cinematic this way scene opens farm longhorns curtains poop. open yeah okay uh this spider is fucking booking it up the Ooh. aisle just like fucking sprinting like legs akimbo all in the air like you ever seen a spider run like yeah, really dude. run yeah it's 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 awful i wouldn't recommend it but anyway <laughs> spider is just hauling ass up the aisle and i'm like this guy's fucking running for something and i thought like it was gonna go like grab a bug running to eat for or something or from it was running from <laughs> So okay. the spider, as it's like galloping away, it's it's getting Ew, so don't, close. Don't use that. <laughs> like that sounds concept. horrible. <laughs> well, because tarantulas best. are huge too. It, so. it was so big. I like my skin is crawling just just <laughs> talking about this. I'm itchy. So, uh, okay, so this thing, you know, is going. Okay, it's going and it's running up the aisle and. Just like kind of out of nowhere from behind it, like over the horizon looms this big fat wasp. And I was like, okay, what, what is happening? And at this point, like I'm clutching Richard. I'm like, are you seeing this? Do you see what's happening right now? Right next to us? Because we're, we're on the aisle. We're like right next to where this is occurring. Yeah. And so the spiders fucking run in. This wasp just comes in like, like a, like a helicopter over this thing. Just like, like, circling over the wasp and uh, circling over the spider okay and it, it's the most like gripping thing i've ever seen in my life and then the spider i'm like is the spider running from the wasp are they running towards something together and so the spider like it spins around it does a 180 and it, and it does the whole like animal crossing like full yep. rear up like the, <sighs> like it's about to like it's about to strike and the wasp is just like hovering there and they stare at each other for a minute 
And they just like, you could see them lock eyes and you could see like, this is a fight to the death. And yeah. I'm like, who's going to fucking win? <laughs> so the, it, this, this maybe happened in like the course of 10 seconds or so. Okay. But like to to me, it felt like a whole lifetime. It felt like I was watching a ninety minute action thriller oh movie. My God. This fucking wasp, as a spider rears up, the wasp takes the opportunity to just like sting the the thing, like right under the belly of the beast, just gets it right yeah. in the abdomen. Spider instantly like falls over on its back, fucking keels over, legs curled up, looking like a Tim Burton crumpled sheet of note paper or whatever. Uh huh. And like the wasp is not done with the spider, <laughs> it's not so, done with it. So so hang on, are you about to go wild wild west with this thing? I don't even know what that means. Tell me the rest of the story, and we'll see if what I remember from that movie is about to happen. The wasp just fully started eating the spider, just mm-hmm. completely like head first in there, just like <laughs> just all up on that spider, just like grabbing fistfuls of meat from this tarantula belly. And In like, case you didn't know, welcome to Yimtope, everybody. Welcome to Yimtope. <laughs> God. <laughs> and so I just, yeah. at this point, I'm like fucking bewildered. And everybody else at this at this fucking wedding is like, of course, watching the procession of people coming up the aisle. Like, oh, look at these people. Aren't they so fucking pretty? And Nobody just, else has just, noticed this? I just think they're Richard, like... Like, we just experienced the most horrific thing we've ever seen in our lives. <laughs> and the guy, the other awkward dude that we sat down behind, he turns around. And he's like, is that a good sign? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was, it was, it's all I can remember from the wedding. Like, it's, it's the only thing that I retained. I mean, cute, small ceremony. It was wonderful. It was lovely. But like, that spider, that was... That was my my whole week right there. Well, so now I'm picturing, you know, because this sounds like this happened in the aisle. So yes. I'm picturing the, like, processions coming down and, like, the first person just sees it and is like, oh, gross, and just, like, kicks it out of the way. They didn't even look at it. They just walked over this corpse like nothing happened. And I'm sitting there traumatized. Like, I just watched this thing fight for its life and lose, and you're just walking over him. Okay. Oh, <sighs> So yeah. maybe, maybe what I'm thinking, you remember the movie Wild Wild West with Will Smith, right? So vaguely, like I know of it, but I don't remember anything from the plot. Okay. Towards the end of the movie, they're wearing the collars where, where like they're magnetized and the saw blades keep trying to cut off their heads and stuff. Okay. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> Man, you gotta watch that movie. That movie's bomb. <laughs> uh, everyone hates it, but I adore it, right? Okay. Well, they get lost in the desert at one point, and there's a tarantula, and this wasp stings it and kills it. Ugh. And the guy's like, yeah, they do that so that they can implant their young in there. Oh, my God. And then when they all hatch, they have something to eat when they are born. Fucking gross. I wonder if that's what it was doing. Like, I didn't have... That's what I think is happening in your scene. Gross. (laughs) Like... You just saw Wild Wild West happen for real. It was. It felt like the Wild Wild West. <laughs> like I, I am. I am a changed woman. I have seen things. The fog of war has crept into my mind. You have seen life and like, death. True life. Um, I'm gonna send you that scene from Wild Wild West later, and you'd be like, "Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what happened." <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say to that. Maybe that's just um. <laughs> Maybe we should just move into uh, our, our next segment. It's a pretty fucking wild thing, man. Yeah, it was awful. Oh, and yeah, it says Wild Wild West wasp scene. So I think I think that's what just happened. I think so. Okay. Enjoy this on your own time later, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I think I have to crack this double now? Can okay. I, can I can I crack this real quick? Yeah, let's crack. This. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. I need this now. Yeah. Uh, Hey, do you want to dedicate this beverage to anybody in particular? Yes, I would, because you texted me today. I will have you know, you literally took my breath away today. I'm so sorry. Um, So you texted me like, hey, did you see that 
Norm Macdonald died. Uh, I will be fair. Most of you will probably not know who that is from the name. Nobody really knows his name. Yeah. But people know the guy. Uh, put up a picture of him. You guys can look at him. Um, he was a big Saturday Night Live person. He was a big Adam Sandler, like, time frame guy, too. Okay. He did stuff with Adam Sandler all the time. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I know who he is, mostly, you know? You know, I actually, so when I, when I read the headline, I was like, oh, fuck, because I, in my brain, I assigned the name Norm MacDonald to Patrick Warburton for whatever reason. Okay. And so I thought Patrick Warburton had died, and I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, dude, I would have died. Yeah, I would have been real sad, but I mean, I mean, it's still sad that Norm MacDonald died. Oh, 100%. Um, uh, yeah, apparently he had, like, a very private battle with cancer, which you know, fucking sucks. I don't know the right word for that, but, like... You know, I don't think it is our business just because you're a celebrity yeah. to have to have to, to tell us everything. He has been battling cancer for 10 years, a full ten? decade. And holy shit, I did not even realize. Yeah. And I mean, why, why, why should we know and then prod and poke him about it all the time? You yeah. Know? Because exactly. you know that that's what we would do. Well, how is it? How you doing? And we'd bother him all the time. He doesn't need that shit, right? Yeah, like with Alex Trebek at the at the end there, you know, like yes. he kept his cancer very secret up until yes. the very end, and then he was like public with it because he had to miss some filming days. So yeah, so Norm Macdonald, if you just go watch him on YouTube, that that voice, like yes, <laughs> the voice is the thing that I take away from him. He had such a unique and awesome voice. I love how he sounds. Yeah, I think that's why I have him tied to Patrick Warburton in my head, because they both have, like, that voice. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that Conan O'Brien and Norm MacDonald were really, really close. Yeah. Uh, so Conan O'Brien today said that he was completely devastated. Norm had the most unique comedic voice I'd ever encountered. I will never laugh that hard again. Aw. And I was like, damn. Like, that's intense. Yeah. And uh, Ismail, one of our patrons in the discord had, well actually he did this on twitter but he had liked a video of this uh <laughs> of this interview that norm was a part of on conan's show okay and he is stepping all over the guests that uh, conan is actually interviewing at the time <laughs> cracking these jokes and I I like laughed out loud so hard at the end. He nailed this one joke out of the park. It was so funny. So I was trying to show it to Taylor because I saw it on Twitter today. Conan O'Brien actually pulled out like an HD copy from his archives and posted it on his YouTube account today. Oh, nice. So I got to watch it in better quality, which I thought was good. Good. Um, and then Adam Sandler also tweeted today. Every one of us love Norm. Some of the hardest laughs of my life were with this man. Most fearless, funny, original guy we knew. An incredible dad, a great friend, a legend. Love you, pal. Sad. I've always toted that I love this guy, and most people have never heard of him. Or at least yeah. just known, like, one thing that he was from. But to me... And it's funny, because Adam posted a picture from Billy Madison, and that's what I remember him from the most. He he has the stupidest line ever, and it's like my favorite line from that movie. Adam asks him what day it is. He's like, there's something important I was supposed to do today. And he's like, what's today? And Norm goes, October? Because they're all like stoner <laughs> buddies and stuff. Okay. And that shit, it makes me laugh so hard every time. I think it's so funny. Um, So this one's to Norm. Truly awesome dude. Awesome comedian. It's... Very sad that uh, we're going to start seeing this more because now we're aging. Uh, I hate that. You know, like we're going to see a lot of people that we thought were super awesome and cool be disappearing at some point. So um, this one's to Norm. You are truly a comedic legend. Well, what else you got uh, going on in your life right now? I wanted to tell you a story, but it has grown exponentially in that time. Okay. <laughs> Since I originally brought it up. What happened? So, last Friday, so let's see, that would be, that would be the 10th, before the demise of your beloved tarantula. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I don't know. I was sitting here doing work, 
Um, I try to keep the AC, like, just out of the range of the 20-degree rule and stuff, you know? Yeah. And I, like, cranked it up to, like, 76, because it was going to be, like, 90-something. I was like, it's fine. End of the day is coming up. I was like, all right, let's start cooling it down. So I turn it on, and temperature goes the wrong way. Uh-oh. I was like, um, I went up. I should be going down. So I go look at it, and, like, the whole little like fan inside the AC is just seized up. It's not doing nothing. God. Now I wrote to them beforehand and said, Hey, the fan motor's probably going to go out because this thing sounds like shit. Yeah. It sounds like picture every movie you've ever seen where they have to stop a train and the sparks are flying and they <laughs> seize up those wheels. Oh God. I know exactly what sound you're talking about. That's what my AC sounded like Fuck. all the time. Okay. And it's right outside my window. Yeah, that sucks. That's that's bad. Yeah, it's bad. So I told them that it was fucked up. And I got back a service request that said, uh, Freon levels are good. Uh, can't do anything about the noise. It's just loud. Okay. <laughs> and now here we are like a week or two later, which is September 10th on that Friday. And it has now kaput and it's done, right? All right. I found this out when I got off work. It's Friday. I was like, well, so I put in a maintenance request and I was hoping to hear something. Yeah. Like usually in Texas, when the AC goes out in September, they're pretty quick about it because it's still fucking hot. Actually, it is like a legal matter. Yes. It is an an emergency situation if your AC is out and it is over 86 degrees. Yeah. Outside, right? That is like grounds for emergency. I did not hear from them until Monday. I would have lit them on fire. So we went the entire weekend, the 11th and the 12th, with it being 95 outside, roughly. So it was 80 in this apartment the whole weekend. Dear God. And you have, like, little baby kittens in your house. Little baby kittens, Jinx and Bulbasaur, and Bulbasaur being a little scrunch face. flat face man, yeah. It's harder on them as well. So anyway, it sucked here. I'm right? sorry. It has sucked. So I call Monday. And this is when I told you, because I just was going to tell you, it's out, it's hot. I put that in our topic suggestions before this started. Yeah. They came out at around 11. You could see that they turned it on, turned it off. So now that they did the smart stuff in the apartment, you can see when, like, anything happens here. So it says, like, this apartment management person turned on the ac unit oh okay that that person turned it off you know uh the front door opened front door got locked like you can see everything that happens in the house that's tied to these systems right that's nice well so i knew they were working on it and i had kind of formed a habit of going to my bedroom window and turning on the ac and watching the fan spin and then (laughs) watching it go and then like crap out and die yeah. It would usually last about two minutes before it would stop. Uh, I go to the window because I was just going to go check on stuff. And I saw that they were out there working on it. And I won't yeah. lie. I went like full blown like peeping Tom neighbor. And I like was at my window <laughs> looking through the blinds through the tiniest crack watching what they were doing to fix it. Right. Oh my God. Well, I didn't want to just open it and be like, what are you doing? You know, what are you guys doing? You want help? Yeah. I didn't want to do that. So I just like peeked at him instead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I I felt so weird, but I just had to Sound watch what they weird. were doing. <laughs> so I'm watching them do the stuff. They took the top off and just flipped it over so that the fan was sitting there. Okay. And they just doused it in WD-40. Nice. And then they spun it, doused it with WD-40, spun it, doused it, spun it, flipped it back on, turned it on. It didn't quite sound like train squealing brakes it sounded like a dryer full of rocks oh god but hey whatever right it's a little better uh so it spun and they left like i saw the guy do a thumbs up good soup right (laughs) okay and then he left and about 10 minutes later the fan stopped again uh well first of all i would like to ask you what does wd-40 do because i feel like i need to tell the people i mean it's like a anti-squeaker but is it a lubricant? I think so. No, it is not. No? Do you know what WD-40 stands for? What did 
<laughs> 40 do? It stands for Water Displacement Formula Number 40. Okay. This guy was coming up with, uh, like, solvents to, like, disperse water, right? And this was the 40th try that he made that worked. All right. So it's made to, like, get water out of something? Yeah. It displaces things. So by spraying that on there, any lubricant that was in that fan, he just got rid of. Oh, my God. Like, he ruined it by doing Fuck. that. Like, that's not He that's fucked not it good. up. You're actually not even supposed to spray it on door hinges and stuff because... It's it for? WD-40 actually attracts dirt and then would cause it to what? fuck up faster. I thought WD-40 was like the wet stuff. Did you... Like, put this on to make things wet and slippery. No, not at all. Because it, uh, it, it dries fast. I feel like I've been lied to my whole life. You have been because I actually looked up an article with Taylor today and everything that you think it's used for is not what it's used for. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, yeah. So here's the thing that I found from earlier. You would like this if you were more into gardening. So you said, what is it used for? Right? Yeah. So actually, one of its big uses is to. I, I said it wasn't a lubricant, but this does say to lube a shovel. If you, what do you, what? if you if you spray it on a shovel or a or a spade fork, hoe or a garden trowel, the soil will not build up on it. It just slides right off. Okay. We think of that shit. I think that's weird. Do you know how I many mean, times I've been using a shovel and you, you know you get the little clump of dirt at the end, like the yeah, tip and of like it, kick and it, it off with your socks. Boot. Yeah, I could use WD forty on that shit. I had I. I'm my mind right now. Like I consider myself a pretty handy person. But how often do you use WD-40? I'm using it for all the shit you're not supposed to use it for. Apparently, like I put it on door hinges and stuff. I don't do that. Ugh. Um, it's uh good for cleaning tile. Okay. It's actually really good for getting rid of like spilled mascara, nail polish, paint, scuff marks. S- like gets rid of all that stuff, and it's really good to clean out your grout lines and stuff. Oh my god. Uh, it helps get rid of stains from stainless steel sinks. Uh, actually, so quick question. You know how when gum gets in your hair and people like, put peanut butter on it? Yes. No, that's, that's WD-40. Okay. <laughs> Slides right out of your hair. Oh my god. Like, WD-40 gets gum out of hair. Easily. I'm, I'm aghast. Uh, softens leather. Softens leather? Yeah, so I guess, like, if you have a belt and it's, like, too stiff and you want to loosen it up, you can just spray it down and... Crap, Get it supple. Break it in, good. Uh, this one's kind of funny. Free stuck Legos. Uh, there's a tool oh, that comes man. in all the kits now for that, so you don't need that anymore. <laughs> I feel like that would just slip up the Lego. Uh, your kid draws with crayons up on the walls and stuff, wipes right off with WD-40. Spray him with WD-40, tell him never to do it again. Yep. Don't do that! <laughs> Uh, it prevents flower pots from sticking together when they're stacked up together. Okay. It gets rid of rust and it removes goo. So actually, I've been needing some goo be gone for a steel book that I got because there was a sticker they put on it that left a whole bunch of sticky crap on it. Just get a little WD-40 up on that thing. And I have WD-40. So actually, I'm, I'm going to go get it and try that out later. Okay. But then it says things that you should not spray it on. You ready? Okay. Door hinges. Yeah, that's Says, like... sure, it will stop the squeaking, but it also attracts dust and dirt, and over time, you end up with ugly black streaks on your hinges. Okay. Bike chains. WD-40 can cause dirt and dust to stick to the chain, so use bike-specific lubricants. It says you shouldn't use it in paintball guns, because it can melt some of the seals in it. Imagine. Well, I'm, I'm imagining, like, <laughs> shooting balls of WD-40 out of a paintball gun. <laughs> You're not squeaky. You're not squeaky. <laughs> Apparently, you know what? I think I have heard of people doing this, but uh, spraying it into locks. It says, and don't do that. Why would you do that? I don't know. I guess know. if your lock is stuck or rusty or something. Yeah. Uh, it says that it can prematurely wear down the internal mechanisms, especially in pin tumbler locks. So you can okay. fuck up your lock. Shit. And then this one bothered me. Like this pissed me off. Ready? <laughs> Okay. iPods and iPads. What are you WD-40-ing your iPad for? It says people. 
WD-40 won't won't fix your sticky home button situation. Oh my god. So people are fucking spraying WD-40 on that sticky home button. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's like uh, it causes the plastic to break down. Yeah. And if it gets inside, it fucks up all the electronics. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that, that makes me angry. <laughs> yeah, that one really fucked me up. So anyway... Don't do it on your door hinges no more, people. Find something else. Like, right. there's there's better ways. But anyway, he displaced whatever l- lubricant was making the fan spin well in the first place. So now oh it was God. super fucked up, right? Okay. I was like, hey, it still doesn't work. Called the office, said it doesn't work. You know, they came out, but they didn't make it better. So they were like, oh, well, we'll send them back out there. So I turned... I was like, all right, I'm going to turn it back on because they clearly saw the fan spin and went, oh, well, the fan's good. So they left. Yeah. I'm going to turn it on now so that it'll freeze and then they'll come and go, oh, yeah, it's on and not spinning. Huh. It's really broken, right? Okay. They didn't show up for four more hours. Oh, my God. So I left it on. And what happens when you leave an AC unit on with no fan going is it starts to cook itself. Jesus. And the heat spills into your home. No. So I'm raising the temperature in here and my electricity bill because it's still running. Fuck. Right? And I'm like, they're not here. And it's hot now. It's hotter than it was. Jesus. I don't know what to do with you. So I called them like every 30 minutes from like 3 o'clock until the end of the day. My God. And they never came back out again. Never? No. No. I Until, literally... like, 8 o'clock <laughs> that night. Fuck. So 8 o'clock last night. And you know what they did? Jack shit. They sent us an email. You know what the email said? We ran out of WD-40. Your AC unit is broken. We've oh my God. ordered a new one. Oh, my God. And don't ask what else it said, because that's literally what it said. Those were the, that's, like, the quotation. It said, hello, your AC unit is broken. A new one has been ordered. Thanks, management. Wow. No, like, expected no in time this time table. frame. Nothing. It's broken. We're getting a new one. Did and you email them back? Like, I have a lot of animals in here that are getting hot. No, they don't care. Oh, well, they stopped taking my calls towards the end of the day. Fuckers. And kept, like, sending me places, so. I, I hate apartment living so much. I remember it with yeah, it's a fervor. Good. <sighs> and here's the thing, though. This place was great a long time ago. Yeah. Like, it was really nice. Things were amazing. But we've gotten, like, six six new manage, management companies in that time. Good God. And usually, a management company will sell it when they know they can't make more money from it. Yeah. So that means people are like, oh, fuck, this place is ruined. And then You've they just, like, drop it. this place for, like, eight it. years, right? Uh, this is our... Th- this is the fifth year. Okay. So... Yeah, but not after this one. It's not happening. Okay. Yeah, move somewhere better. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So, that's all I get. So, you know what that means, clearly. That Ain't says it. to me, uh, maybe get you an AC next week, because, you know, we got to order one, you know? Yeah. But, you know, it's going to be a week, probably, right? Fuck. It's like 70 degrees in here right now. Good. What happened? They came out with one today. Today. Okay. Thank God. I came out at like two o'clock and it was finally done at like seven. Jesus. But they left for like an hour or two there. Like they just like brought it. They set it down and then they left for like two (laughs) hours and then they came back and finished it. Like I didn't know what they were doing because they've never told me. They haven't contacted us at all. They just like put it down. They were like, install it yourself. Yeah, they, they just have been doing stuff without telling us. God. It is an AC that I think is the proper size for an apartment this size. Okay. Good. Because all the ones at this complex are really small. And this one seems to be about the right size. Good. So I cooled the place down before we even started recording from 81, because it was 81 at the time. Jesus. And got it down to 70 in an hour. Why are we both just having terrible AC issues? Why is this happening to us? I don't know. I'm glad that they got it fixed and that you're nice and cool again. I'm glad to. But before I conclude this... I'd like to tell you about a review that I read on this place. Okay. Somebody said they have been without AC since the last summer. What? They said 
they keep calling and try and like try to get stuff done. Well, so it it was this review that said my son lives at these apartments, so she's writing the review, I guess, on his behalf or something. Okay, just a pissed mom. Yeah, and she's like, he hasn't had it since last summer, so it was fine all oh. winter because that's good. You're like like that's fine. You don't need it. But she's like, and the summer months are coming, and they still haven't done anything, and we call them every day. They never pick up. What the blah, fuck? Blah, blah. And then she goes, and I'm pretty worried because he has a 15 year old senior dog that lives with him. Oh, so no. you can't have an old dog in the heat like that. That's not good. I'd like to believe there's no way that there can be an apartment with no AC for a full year. No, that's that's illegal. But I, I don't know if I can put it past it now. You know. Yeah. So I don't know, but yeah. So anyway, I have AC. I didn't expect to at this point in time. I really thought it was going to be next week. So I'm pleasantly surprised, but now I'm offended for this person that might not have AC still that may be here from last year. Yeah, for real. I wish we had an apartment number so we could call on their behalf. Well, they did say they lived in apartment or building 14. So maybe I'll just go knock on all the apartments and be like, do you have AC? Do you have AC? I... Till I find the person, I'll be like, all right, let's get you some, and I'll just come dump like a whole him. thing of WD 40 down his AC and be like, okay, now they have to fix it. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking busted now. Uh, you had some AC stuff, then I had AC stuff. So I don't know what's wrong with ACs right now. No, well, fuck all that. At least it's done. Yeah, a good appliance thing I'll tell you about real quick. Okay. Um, some people came to my parents' house today right before we started recording and i guess there's a government initiative right now to get um solar panels on people's homes hell yeah there is and so they came to their house and said if you meet these requirements you get it all for free it's installed for free you you still have to like pay for the solar panels well yeah but like they're gonna maybe get solar panels now and i was like good yeah yeah this is great i know people with those yes solar panels are the way yeah so, uh, maybe I can report on that one day. Nice. Because it's good for them. Good for them. But what's good for you? Um, I've been watching Markora. Okay. So, I'm pretty deep into season two. I think I'm at the end of season two now. And I, I think, man, it's a big, it's a big statement to say, but I like Korra better than, better than Avatar. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of told you. It's so good. Like, I kind of told you. There is so many good themes. Like, I, I almost want to do a Zeitgeist review on this, but I just, I have to talk about it because it's so, it's occupying, like, real estate in my brain that's very important and I need to just, like, get it out. I was watching it week by week when it initially aired, right? Yeah. Uh, season two, the part that we stopped at, and I think you'll know where it is, we stopped the last episode we saw at the time, and I just remember this was the last thing we saw. There was that water tribe girl that was all over Bolin. Uh huh. And he left on that boat and she came like storming down yes. the ocean and she was all like, I'm coming to get you or whatever, right? Yeah. And we went, damn, this show is boring. And we like stopped watching it. Oh my God. But it was like a week by week thing. And yeah. I don't know, like the beginning of season two, because I think that might be like the third episode of that season. The beginning of season two was pretty slow. Yeah, like those first three, we were like, this is not good like the Amon stuff. Yeah, like the first season of Avatar, they really set up that whole, like, this is the big bad and it's a great arc. And then season two starts and it's like, everybody's normal and we're living a happy life. And it's just like, we go about our daily business and And Mako is a cop and Bolin is like a movie star or whatever. And... But yeah, it gets... Have you watched the rest of season two? Yeah, we've watched through season three. Okay. Season um, two... So yeah, I is, I know it got way better. Yeah, it got amazing. I The whole concept of like... So they have um, Rava and Vatu, the two like dark and light spirits. Dude, I think about that shit a lot still. It's 
incredible. Isn't I it? love the concept yes. of like the battle of good and evil that takes place every 10,000 years. Yes. And the whole thing with the dude, Unalak, becoming the dark avatar. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> this is amazing. Okay. And I wanted I wanted him so badly to be the dark avatar. And then we had this big arc where like the avatar and the dark avatar have to keep fighting each other over and over lifetime after lifetime. But like... That didn't happen. So yeah. obviously Korra spoilers here. But um man, yeah, the whole the whole arc with like the original Avatar going way back into Wan's age and seeing how the spirit world used to be a part of the regular world and the Avatar is the bridge between the two. What'd and you think whole, of that shit? Oh my god, like it gave the whole me first tingles. Avatars thing. Yes, it's I pretty love great, it. Right? It's so good. I would watch a okay. whole season of Wan. Like it's No shit. It's it was so amazing. Good. <sighs> and he was man. a smart dude, stealing for, all for these real. powers from these turtles, man. I loved it. And the whole thing with Jinora and how she has those, like, imaginary friends, but they're, like, actually spirits, and only she can see them because she has a connection to the spirit world. Yeah. Man, there are some themes in these, uh, in, in, this, in this series that, like, oh, you get to see Aang's kids grow up, and they're... They're like full grown adults, like 40s and 50s, like adult yeah. ass adults. And they're just <laughs> dealing with their own internal struggles of like, you know, uh, what's his face? Uh, J.K. Simmons, whose name yeah. continues to escape me because it's That's all I can uh, picture. Tenzin. Tenzin. Yes. Yeah. Um, Tenzin's dealing with the fact that like he is the the airbender that has to carry on the whole tradition of airbending. So he has these children and they're airbenders too. And he has, he has to be like the pillar for airbenders. And then you have, you know, the waterbender who didn't find her place in the world. She was like going off and doing other things and being like, not part of the family and didn't want to be tied down. And then you have Boomy who can't bend at all. And each of them are going through their own separate thing and then when they when they lose Jinora into the spirit realm when she like goes in and guides the avatar to the spirit realm and yeah. she just disappears and like goes off and Tenzin is stuck like not knowing where his daughter is so they fucking go in and they go into like the fog of lost souls which was the most metal shit I've ever seen <laughs> in my life it's like fog that makes that like undoes therapy <laughs> it, like, yeah. it, it gets in your brain and just like needles at the bad parts of you and makes all the all your fears and anxieties just come out and watching each of them kind of go through that and literally lose themselves in the fog like they all got separated and lost again and Tenzin stuck in there he's lost his daughter he's lost his sister he's lost his brother he's lost himself yeah. almost and then he has this moment where he's like able to find clarity and he's like actually i am not my father and i don't have to carry on this tradition of airbending it's not solely on my shoulders and he has this moment where he can like blow away all the fog and you see just like a sea of people that are just stuck out in the fog and he's able to go and walk and find his little baby girl and pick her up and hold her and then he grabs his siblings and they fucking book it out of there and it was making sure you weren't about to cry oh (laughs) it's good right I was literally crying in this episode. I was like, he's he's finding himself and he's finding his family. But like, oh, and then when they get Jinora out of the spirit realm, she's like, wait, my, my job's not done yet. And she fucking goes back. I was like, oh, my God. And then they have the whole like mecha fight where where what's his face? Uh, Unalak grows to be like the dark avatar and he inhales the dark spirit and then yeah. he also breaks rava which was heartbreaking i i have been on an emotional roller coaster this season <laughs> <laughs> and like you you also see iroh in the spirit realm and it's just like why is he here it's just to make me cry <laughs> <sighs> and then okay so the the giant fight between the two avatars when like when Korra gets, you know, severed from her past lives and everything is kind of gone to shit. And there's a scene where the dark avatar like opens this crevice in the ice and she falls down in it. And he's using his bending powers to like bend the ice crevice back together with her inside of it. And it's crushing her. And it was the most visceral thing. Like the animators don't, hold back on this and the storyboarders they're just like how what are the most fucked up ways we can bend somebody to death basically (laughs) and avatar 
that's one of the things I've I've loved about the original show and this show. Like, they do not hold back on good animation. Right. Like, this whole show, especially the arc with Juan, how they animated, like, <gasps> everything was really old school, like, Japanese Watercolor kind of. and shit. Yeah. So cool. Oh, <clears throat> it, like, touched my heartstrings. I just, I love especially everything about you, this show. Especially you, because you're so artsy like <laughs> i feel like yeah that that whole era would have given you good vibes yeah i like every everything about the show it just continues to surprise me it is more and more amazing i was resistant to watch it in the first place because i was like avatar was so good and i don't want to be disappointed by a, a sequel that doesn't live up to the hype you know oh man cora no. is worth the hype it is oh yeah it is double the hype i think I think anybody who enjoyed Avatar, or even if you thought Avatar was just okay, you should watch Korra because it's it's leagues ahead. I think we put it best in one of the last ones, one of the last shows where we talked about it. This The original show was for kids, and this is for the adults now. Yes, 100%. Like, this show is for adults, 100%. It is probably like for the adults that watched that original show, and now it's like, yeah, well... Now the show's grown up with you too. Yeah. Like it's still for you, that same kid that watched Nickelodeon and watched Aang go through his stuff, come back and watch this one now. It's still for you. Yeah. You know? Uh, um, so good. I mean, and the guy that made it, he has like his own, like he owns the universe that is Avatar and he has like, plans for just branching stuff that's going to keep coming out from this series so good there was a kickstarter recently for a tabletop of uh like a tabletop oh, yeah. game of avatar and i i haven't invested in it i might go back and check it out and see if it's still happening because you know what i'm still on kickstarter from our conversation earlier so uh, ah. give me one second so the goal was fifty thousand fifty thousand okay. dollars do you know how much money it made I'm sure they surpassed that. I don't even think you can guess. Like, I literally don't <laughs> think you can guess. <laughs> so they they requested 50,000? 50, 50,000. I would say they probably got, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, like, 800,000 because there's a lot of interest in this. You are literally so far behind. What? They asked. They said, hey, everybody, please give us 50,000. Half of $100,000, right? Okay. They pulled in nine point five million dollars. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Kelsey, what? Nine million five hundred thirty-five thousand three hundred seventeen dollars. Oh a my total, god! A total of eighty-one thousand backers. What the fuck? Um, yeah, there was support behind it, Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it big big things are. Every stretch goal unlocked, so you get every little thing they had as a bonus, too. Hell yeah. See, this is the Kickstarter shit that I like to see, where it's like... Yes. It just went full tilt, off the rails, successful, you know? Yeah, see, it's only 75 bucks for for the late pledge core book and all stretch goals. So you get, like, the yeah, book that tells dude. you how to play, and, like, all of the dice and the players, Matt... Oh, this man. fucking book! It's, it's got very Aang cool. on the front and Korra on the back in the Avatar state. Yes. And they're holographic? Okay, no. we're putting this picture up in the thing for you guys because this is gorgeous. It really, really is. Oh, man, this picture is big. All right, we're, we're going to have to snip it and cut just the piece out that we want. But, like, that's a fucking cool book. I, I might have to give to this. Because that's fucking cool. And look, you yeah. get dice. You get dice. I know, the dice. I want to touch the dice. That means you also get deluxe dice. And those deluxe dice are so cool. They look really, really cool. So it's, it's what, $200 if you want the du deluxe dice. I thought you got all the goals. So for, okay, there's, they've named all the tiers after <laughs> different animals, which I love. So the winged lemur is just like the book and the PDFs. If you get the otter uh, penguin, you get the core book and all the stretch goals. So it's like the normal dice gotcha. and a, a dice bag. If you get the polar bear dog, you get the special cover that you like. 
if you go with the flying bison which oh my god this is the one that has a special cover and it has these really cool dice and then a nice like leather dice bag yeah i was just looking at the dice bag <laughs> yeah it's pretty nice <laughs> yeah i don't think i want to give 100 bucks though i know like if i back this i'm gonna do the the otter penguin just do like a 75 dollar. yeah i mean it's still cool yeah, it's yeah, very cool. But I want the book. I want that the book is nice book. though. <laughs> you know what? For like ten million bucks, you can give me the book. Like you can produce <laughs> another book if I do a hundred. That's fine. Yes. Okay, I gotta get off Kickstarter too. Done I know. With that. Yeah. Okay, let's put this away. <laughs> but anyway, Cora, super dope. I'm so glad you're digging it. Yeah, it's got the Yemtope guarantee. I think that you all should watch it because it's yeah lighting up my life. Oh, I just noticed that on this book, she's got the, the Rava spirit on her chest. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> God, close it. Done. <laughs> I can't. Do you know the dew? The mountain dew? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am familiar with the mountain dew. No, this guy's name is the dew. He plays a uh, guitar on, uh, what do you call it? What are the, kind of like chat roulette. Okay, Omegle. Yes. Yeah. So he gets on omegle and like people are like dying to like come across his page because they say play this song and he he can play anything okay crazy right he sounds like a fun time dude i have watched his videos a lot but see i think he's part of a group of guys that play games on youtube what what his name is just like the do like t-h-e space d-e-w nope nope it's all one word it's the d-o-o-o so three the three doo. o's the do and like you've never seen his face like it's always neck down it's just like neck him and his down guitar, that's right? disturbing well it's just like a guy playing well i mean you got to see him play the guitar i guess yeah he's you, you like never see his face is this the game grumps <laughs> is the do in the game grumps but i don't think so, so i think he's in something <laughs> different is this the game grump that's the energy that we're bringing to the <laughs> Well, because people talk about them, but I don't know who they are. I feel so out of touch with internet gaming culture. Like, as much as I identify as a gamer girl, a gaming culture alienates me. My gaming culture is me by myself. All right. Um, if you enjoyed that bit of the preamble, you can get the full bonus episode by going over to patreon.com slash yemtope and signing up to be a patron. Patrons help us make the show. Do you want to help us make the show? Go on over to the website. We love you very much. And if you want to be the ultimate supporter, you can get yourself some Yimtope gear over at the Yimtope Apparel store. Uh, that link is in our show notes if you want to shop there. And again, thank you guys so much for coming around, sticking around, being around. We love you. Now back to your regularly scheduled Yimtope. All right. This, this carries over from our Friday roundup last week, actually two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so you, you had brought this topic to me to to kind of research and give a brief summation of but i don't think like we we could have spent the entire friday right up talking about this yeah i mean i just i just wanted to say hey look at this cool uh artwork for horizon because i thought it was really neat looking yeah so i really just wanted to show that off and be like yeah horizon's a thing don't forget about it (laughs) but uh you got i think you got a little offended by what was uh going on surrounding the game yeah so just as like a brief sum up of what happened basically sony said that they were going to allow everyone who pre-orders what was it horizon forbidden west on the ps5 yeah. or whoever, whoever pre-ordered it on the ps4 can get it for free on the ps5 yes. because you're, you want to be able to cross play with the game and um they when they later released it they said that we're we're kind of they they went back on their deal essentially they were just like no literally backtracked yeah so if you want the game for both PS4 and PS5 you have to get the digital deluxe version or the collector's edition or the regalia edition which are all much more expensive than just buying the game flat out right on the PS4 so fans were like hey what the fuck? Because you kind of promised, you literally promised like word for word horizon forbidden West is going to be free on the PS five for those who bought it on the PS four. So what happened? (laughs) So, I mean, yes, I would definitely consider myself in the Sony camp 
over yeah. Xbox, but I'll tell you what's fucking going on. Tell me what's going on. Are you ready? Explain. PlayStation, I mean, this is like years in the making to this, like based on things they have said to what is happening now, right? Yeah. But essentially, when the PlayStation 5 was coming out, we believe in generations. That was like the quote. That was the big thing. We will not make cross-platform games. Like when we make the new God of War, only on PS5. When we make the new Gran Turismo, only on PS5. Because we believe in a hard stop of generations, right? Okay. Anyone know what happened? What happened? Scalpers happened. Ugh. And you know what? No one has a fucking PlayStation 5. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good idea in theory when it started. But I think what they're seeing is they were like, well, we anticipated more people to be buying games and playing these games. Like when we released God of War, people buy it on the PS5 because there were PlayStation 5s out there. But now if we were to do that, this is my thinking as to why they're doing it. And I'm not saying that it's the right answer. This is simple theory. This is simple business, right? Okay. If they put out God of War on the PlayStation 5, who's going to buy it? The 20 people that have a PlayStation 5? Right. And they make no money. You know how many people own PlayStation 4s? A lot. It's like 15, 20 million people. Yeah. So let's say half your population buys a $60 game. You've already raked in like almost a billion dollars. Fuck. So by cutting yourself to your believing in generations, you're going to yeah. lose that on a like guaranteed money. Lots of people have PS4s. Lots of people don't have to go out and buy a system to play the new God of War. They have that PS4. It would make sense to do cross generations. Sure. But they said, no, we don't believe in that. We're not doing that because that's stupid. And anyone that wants us to do that is stupid. And every game they said they weren't going to do that with they're releasing on ps4 as well God. so again backtrack right yeah so they've already said that and then this whole like upgrade tree thing everybody knows that xbox has smart delivery that's the system they're touting it in and basically what it means is you simply go buy um here you go buy cyberpunk 2077 right okay you have the disc you put it in your xbox one and it goes oh this is an Xbox One, so I'm going to play the Xbox One version of this. Now, I take that same disc, and I've got a Series X for Christmas, right? I throw okay. that same disc in the Series X, and it goes, oh, uh-oh, I'm in a Series X. I'm going to load the better version of this game. It's smart and does it without you having to think about it. Oh, nice. That's what Xbox is doing. I was okay? not aware of that. That's That's super cool, actually. Yeah, it's called Smart Delivery. So basically... Whatever system you're playing on, it will know what version of the game you should be playing. PlayStation's not doing that. Okay. Their version of it is so convoluted. I take a disc. So, actually, Mortal Kombat 11 that's been out for however long. You got a free upgrade to the PS5 version for that. So I installed it on my PlayStation 5. Guess what? It was the PS4 copy. Okay. You, you have to go into the game, like, in the store, and then go to, like, you, you gotta, like, go to, like, the game's page, choose all the different options for it, and pick the PS5 version to then install. It doesn't Dumb. just, like, make it happen. Okay, that's a lot of extra steps for the consumer. Exactly. That's the thing. Xbox is making it, as as you would say, in business world, like, you're dumbing it down. You're making it so that... Us as the consumer don't even have to think about it. Yeah, it's painless. Sony's making it very technical. Like a like a technical person, it's not that big a deal to them. They understand what to do. But to your they average just... Joe, they just want to play their game. They want to play it the best way they can. They don't want to have to worry about that. Yeah. And that's what Xbox is doing for them. And it's great. And I applaud that highly. You can't even tell which version you're, you're, uh, you're playing. They had to update the system to be able to go, oh, by the way, that's the PS4 one. That's so stupid. Like, just a tiny little thing that says, this is the PS4 copy, PS5, you know, and that's on there now, wasn't before. Yeah. Um, and let's not forget, I am pro Sony, because I'm looking at a God of War wallpaper on my computer, right? Of course. But they're not doing... 
you can't defend stupid shit that people do. No. The company's still the company that I'm buying games from because they're good games, but they could be running it better. Yeah, I mean... That's what I'm saying, you know? They they bungled the whole release of their entire console. Like, their whole generational shift was fucked up. And now they're just messing up all the games right behind it. Yeah. So, I'm not surprised. I'm just sad. <laughs> I'm disappointed, Sony. Well, so here's the thing. It bounces back and forth every time. Here's the deal. PS2 came out. And then the Xbox came out. PlayStation 2 kicked Xbox's ass. It was not even close, right? Yeah. Sony was on top, and they were very cocky, and they came out with the PlayStation 3 at a crazy big price, but they were on top. Of course you'd be willing to pay it. Nobody wanted to pay it. The PlayStation 3 was a $600 system when it first came out. Fuck that. That's what a cocky company does, right? Yeah. So, then in an effort to beat them at that, we got the Xbox 360, which when that and the PS3 came out, Xbox... Head of the game 100% of the way. Xbox yeah. Gold came out. They invented online multiplayer as it exists today, basically, you know? Yeah. Like, party systems, all that stuff. Like, Xbox 360 made that happen. Xbox was on top. At a cost, though, they had Red Rings of Death. Right? I forgot about that. Yeah, they they released their system a year early to beat Sony to the to the to the gate. Yeah. But their motherboards inside were fucked up. Ugh. But that's not why they're bad. I'm I'm saying everybody gets cocky when they were leading the race. So, Xbox was leading the race. Xbox 360 was kicking PlayStation 3's ass. Yeah. Xbox One comes out, and they botched everything. And it almost destroyed their company because they were on top. You wouldn't care because we're the big dogs, right? Right. So they came out with the Xbox One, and they were like, oh yeah, you gotta check in online for every game you play, no matter what, all the time. Ugh. Like, it was a whole thing. Like, people hated what they were doing. Yeah, I remember. Yep, and Sony came in with the PS4 and annihilated everything. Right. Same way 360 did to the PlayStation 3. And now here we are with the PlayStation 5, and who was on top from last generation? (laughs) PlayStation. And who's acting stupid? PlayStation. Yep. They had good things to say it at the start, but now Sony, Sony, Xbox is being very pro consumer with Game Pass, with smart delivery, with how to even upgrade the memory in your fucking new console. Yeah. It's expensive, but so is the way you do it for Sony, and I don't have to really install it. I just got to stick it in like a memory card. Done. Xbox is being very pro consumer right now and that's what we need. That's what we need, especially in COVID times. Yes. And Sony is nickel and diming every little thing they can. And it all started with Ghost of Tsushima. They released that upgrade for the PS5, right? Yeah. You got to pay to upgrade your PS4 copy to that. And that was not one of the games that was ever a cross-generation thing. So it was like, let's try this and see if people pay it. And guess what? We did. I... <sighs> I have not paid for it because I found out that what I thought I had to pay, I got to pay even more to get it. Really? So here's the thing. I thought I own the game and I bought it digital, right? Yeah. I thought I could just pay this additional 20 bucks and get the upgraded copy. Okay. That's wrong. What do you have to pay? I have to pay to upgrade my ps4 copy to the director's cut of the ps4 copy and then pay to upgrade it to the ps5 director's cut copy so i'm essentially paying for two upgrades to get it to the final product that is so stupid and i won't do it like i won't no do it. Yeah, no that's I, just i hate that with a passion that, that frustrates me a lot just knowing that a company would do that in these in these trying in times, these so times many. exactly I won't do it, and, and, like, I want it really bad. Yeah. But I, it feels wrong, <laughs> so I can't do it, you know? That's, I don't even have words for how. That's disgusting. Oh, that makes no, me No, just feel... go ahead and say it. It's fucking, dis- like, like disgusting. it's really bad. Disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. I don't like that. Yeah, it's bad. And then, a month or two later, you're telling everybody that this brand new game that's going to come out, oh, if. If you have a PS4 now because you can't buy a PS5 because wah, right? Yeah. 
Go ahead and buy it for the PS4. Buy it again when you finally get a PS5. You peasants, <laughs> you know? Oh my god. That's a that fucking sucks. slap in the face. Yeah. That really upset me as a Sony consumer. Yeah, I hate that. I mean, I I still like my PS5. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that to get... Well, see, he... Ugh, here's the thing. This only matters if you don't have a PS5 right now. Because if you have a PS5, you just go buy the PS5 copy and you're done. You don't need to worry about this upgrade path. Sure. This is hurting the 20 million people that have that PS4 now that can't get the new one because of these scalpers. So they're hoping they can just at least buy this game for now. Yeah. And go ahead and play it on their PS4, but they can get that great experience when they finally get to PS5. And you're basically telling them, no, you're going to buy that again. That's that's so underhanded almost, yeah. you know? Like, I understand you're on top, but just because you're on top doesn't mean we will just bow down to everything you want. Yeah. It's a very gross thought process. Yes. That every company on top eventually gets to, but like, come on. Come on. It's it's like releasing a game that only runs on a 3080, you know? Like, yeah. Like, at least let us run it on a 20 series or a 10 series. Like, how are you going to alienate these people or say, yeah. if you want to play it the best way later, double dip every yeah. time? Yeah, that's just the worst. It's a and bad business so, model. So basically, this all started because games are now 70 bucks. Right, which is... Which we've hurts talked me. about this before. It's yeah. a bad price point. Like, it makes my skin crawl when I think about it. It's much closer to $100 than it than was. Than I ever want to be. Yeah. But, basically, Sony's like, no, games will be 70 bucks. So that's why now they're going, okay, fine, look, look, look. Buy your PS4 game. But when you come over to PS5, just pay 10 more bucks, and then you get that copy. Yeah. And I mean, that doesn't sound so bad. But it is. But also, that, why? I just... I understand you don't want to lose that on the fact that that PS5 game would have gotten you 70 bucks had they just bought it there outright. Yeah. Because technically, if that's the case, then why wouldn't I buy every single one of my PS5 games on the PlayStation 4 and then just upgrade it for free and save 10 bucks every time? Yeah. Like, I understand that you can use the system that way. Sure. So that's why you're doing that. But there has <laughs> to be an easier way. Yeah. Because, like, for me, I remember when I got my PlayStation 4, they were like, okay, if you have Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you can play the PS4 copy now. But you'll always have to keep that PlayStation 3 disc. And that's what unlocks that PS4 copy. So it's not that's... like I could just get the better game and get rid of my old copy yeah that uh, like it kind of locked me in you know? right now you and, can't take that to gamestop and trade it in for a couple of bucks yeah and that's fine i didn't pay more money i guess i i still had the game i already had and that's essentially what smart delivery is you still gotta have that that same copy of the game that you have yeah you're just bringing it over to the new system so why not let me buy the 60 dollar game and then i don't know Maybe I just have to plug that in every time. Yeah. I don't know. It's the future of gaming is weird and it's on shifting ground and it just things are so <laughs> tumultuous right now. Well, basically, we I mean, I agree with so my review tech USA guy. I mean, he did say something. He was like, I mean, this won't be a problem forever because at some point. We won't be making games for PS4 or Xbox One. There will only be these games. So this is a problem of now. Yeah. And I understand that. But gaming is bigger than it's ever been before. No one's ever owned 20 million PlayStations before. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of gamers. There's a lot of people. And we've also never faced a scalping situation like this before. Yeah. Like, like, these the are unprecedented thing, times. They literally could have avoided this entire skerfuffle by just eliminating the bot buying problem. Like just create a yep. system wherein people who are human beings can go in and buy a singular PlayStation console with a click, you know, yep. don't 
fucking like if you have to have an in-person only release and you don't do it online anymore and you have a one console limit per person that walks in fine do it that way i would much rather walk into a store and physically buy one console than have to sit online and refresh and have two phones in my hand and a laptop on my desk and next to my desktop where i'm trying to get one console it's an untenable system and it sucks and i think that they really that's where they need to focus their efforts on if and when they release a next console (laughs) had that problem been solved they would be making money on the games coming out for the ps5 and we might actually have hit the generational switch yeah i think they're only backtracking because they're like well no one will buy a ps5 copy there's no ps5s out there i wonder why that is sony i think that's why it happened and i understand the logic i understand the circumstances that led it here but you can't punish the consumers for the actions of these groups that are stealing all the consoles. Yeah. I mean, we didn't do... We were trying to give you money, and we, we weren't were allowed to. We weren't yeah. allowed to give you money. And now you're just like, well, then we're just going to steal your money then. Basically. And it really hurts my feelings, and it makes me really upset to think that, you know, a company that you like, a company that you enjoy... While it doesn't affect me personally because I already have the system, I can just buy my $70 game, call it a day. Yeah. But I know tons of people that don't. And I want them to be able to have fun and not feel like they're being abused. And it's 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 a disgusting thing to see. I, I just don't like it. But speaking of their games, <laughs> <laughs> I did want to tell you about uh, one real quick. Okay, it's, tell uh, me about this thing because I'm looking thing. at this picture and the article that you sent and i i have thoughts about it well so i'm gonna get you there in a second okay okay um because i've had people ask me this i just thought i'd go ahead and hit it here hit it with you real quick too need you to hit up the discord okay so first let's hit this bad boy let me go in there too i want to see him over here yeah thick kratos okay muscles so they've been releasing these uh, little images. So Santa Monica Studios has been talking about the new God of War. And they released these like really cool like, hey, here's like, here's the character model. Here's what they're going to look like. And here's the person playing them. I think it's a cool homage to the people, right? Yeah, this is very cool. Like it's just a really good detailed shot of like the character good art. design. Yeah. So here's Kratos played by Christopher Judge, the guy from the last one, right? Okay. I've had lots of people asking uh atreus has grown up a little bit this is the same kid from from part one so this is that same kid having grown up now too so cute though i love his little character model yeah um again it's got a war i can go like thesis level deep on the shit that's in these photos but i'm not doing that okay i just wanted to let you know that the kid from that first game is him in this game so like he's grown up with this character and i think i love that shit you know? Yeah, that's that's lovely. I'm sending you a bunch of these because they're just so cool. I'm taking them. I love this. Uh, this is Freya. She's so cool. Okay, Danielle Bus- Busetti, I think's her name. Sudi? Yeah, she's fucking good, dude. She's so good in this. And she loves being this character. Like, she has so much fun with it. Cracks me up. And then I think we were watching the trailer during the press conference, and you were like, is that a fucking head? <laughs> uh, this is Mamir. He's a head. I fucking okay. love him. He's the coolest dude on the planet. I love his horns. I'll just send you these back to back because these are the dwarf brothers. Okay. Uh, this is Brock, Brock and Sindri. And Sindri. Uh, Brock is my fucking man. I love him. He was the coolest dude in the first game. And actually, I've been half considering. Oh, so it gets a little spoiler. I'm thinking about keeping one of those cats. Oh, yes. I'm thinking about You're keeping call one of those cats. call him Brock or Sindri? Well, no, I'm keeping one cat, and I want to name him Sindri, I think. I love that. So, I'm thinking about it. We'll see. I think you should. Because everyone's like, fuck, I got a war again. <laughs> and I'm like, well, <laughs> kind of. Sindri's a good name because he's a black cat, so it's kind of like cinders and like yeah. embers and stuff. So I like it. I was digging it. Uh, there's this. I thought you'd dig this new character. Verboda. Little, uh, uh character of color you know oh yeah uh this will actually be atreus's wife at some point later oh 
So, so are they about the same age? He looks pretty young. Yeah. So we'll see what, you know, happens with all that stuff. Yeah. But then, so there were more, but I just wanted to go with one more for you. So, I mean, you're digging them all, right? You're digging it. It's, it's oh, great. yeah. I'm you into love this. Them. Okay. This one's causing a fuss. I, okay. First impressions. So give me your I think, first impression. <laughs> I think this, like it or not, is peak male physique. <laughs> Okay. So I I love are, this. We are looking at Thor right now. Yes, the design for Thor for God of War Ragnarok. It makes my heart sore. Look at this man. You just want to slap on that belly. Just like boom. Okay. I he's got that big hammer. He's got that Mjolnir. He's got great armor. He has he has red hair, which you don't see a whole lot of red hair in Thor's. And I think yeah. in the actual mythology, I'm pretty sure he has red hair, right? Uh, I really don't know, because I was going to read up on the mythology. Okay. But I, I, was, I remember I was trying when... to get into the game from Kratos' point of view. Like, I don't understand this world. <laughs> okay. So. so so basically, the character of Thor, I remember there being like a, a kind of, not an uproar, but kind of a, I don't know, a quiet boiling of the fandom whenever they, they cast Chris, uh, Hemsworth? Chris Pine? Uh-huh. Chris? Hemsworth, yeah. Hemsworth, okay. Whenever they cast him as Thor and they had, like, the traditional good looks and the flowing blonde mane. Uh, I mean, I don't... I think I think that Thor has red hair, like, canonically. <laughs> so, this image that you're staring at right now? Uh-huh. This is the accurate textbook. This is what Thor looks like. Fuck yeah. Like This is what everyone should want to look like i want to look like this yeah, this is what he looks like in the norse texts okay beautiful and guess what what we're going full-blown horizon fat face on this guy right oh, now i don't like him because he's fat oh, he's... why why are you making fun of us men god so of course it's not women being uh, upset at this it's it's still guys because we're just upset by anything that's fat right you need to go to therapy <laughs> All of them. Something's up with it. Well, you know, you, did you ever see Moana? No. Okay, but you know what Maui looks like in it, right? Yeah. The you know, the Rock's character. Yes. He got in not not the Rock, but that character got in so much trouble because Moana looks like a nice, delicate, lovely woman, and he's very stylized and like kind of big and oafish, right? Okay. So they were like, you're making fun of the culture and of men. Like, that's our god, and you made him look stupid. Oh, really? Yeah, it caused, like, a big stink. So now people are like, oh, that's not Thor. You made him look stupid, and he's fucking fat and ugly. Uh, and he's people so handsome. are so in an uproar. Look at that face. Are you kidding me? People are calling him ugly? Oh, people are pissed at this guy. They're god. pissed. And... So, you know, you brought up Chris he- Chris Hemsworth in, yeah. in a end game. He had been, like, out of the game <laughs> of sorts for a while. Yeah. And becomes fat in that movie. I remember there being a whole thing about that, like, oh, fat Thor. He's so fucking disgusting. Thor yeah. would never. Oh, but then people saw him in the movie and they loved him, right? Right. Oh, people love fat Thor now. He's, like, a comedic relief, though, right? It's like, oh, he's fat. That's so his funny. point. Yes. Yes. Which uh, is... I I have a lot of opinions on that trope too, but this is not the time to replace for those. But so a lot of people are like, oh, you're just trying to cash in on Marvel's Fat Thor. Okay, okay. <laughs> and here's what I think those people's mindset is. I think they're the same people that would go to Facebook and say, "Happy birthday, America! You turned 2021 years old, January 1st." <laughs> You know, okay. <laughs> like, I think it's that same mindset of people like you can't look to the past in any way, shape or form and realize there's stuff beyond what you've seen today. Chris Hemsworth is not the origin of Thor. Right. This is six, seven hundred year old text worth of history. Put yeah. In, put into this character model, but he doesn't look like Chris Hemsworth. So how fucking dare you? How? dare you take the good image of strong cut blonde thor and bastardize it into this ginger haired fatty how dare you which is another thing that i read 
Have you ever seen a strong man? Like, have you ever seen like yes. the strong man co- competitions? They look fat. Yes. They're fucking thick, dude. Like, I, there's like a meme on the internet, like, this is the peak male form and you don't like it, but I. <laughs> um, it is. It, it is, though. Like, you have, like, muscles. Whenever. There's a whole thing. Like, whenever Marvel gets these guys into the roles for acting and stuff, like, like Wolverine fucking Hugh Jackman has to go without water for like three days to get that cut look and they they yeah. like pass out on set sometimes because that's it's not a healthy way for the body to be yeah. and having a character like this a big strong man with like a like a, a you know a barrel chest and a belly on him he yeah. looks like he could lift mountains and yeah dude <laughs> it, he looks strong as fuck he does and I think that this is like the strong male form that should be more advertised because the bodybuilder look, it's not healthy. Yeah. Like if you're going to advertise for strong men, if you want to have like a, like strong role models, this is a role model to have out there. Yeah. This is a strong man. This is not a bodybuilder. Yeah. This is what a strong man looks like. Yes. And if you want to equate it, Kingpin from Spider-Man, he's literally a giant fat dude. Like he's huge, right? (laughs) Okay. Okay. He is one of the strongest characters in Marvel because all of that is muscle and people nice. mistake it for fat. Okay. Like he's huge. Take a look at this dude. This is a pretty good depiction. I mean, he's, he's not as big as like some of the like comic book stuff, but like people would say he's kind of fat cause he fills out that suit. Right. But he's like yeah. all muscle. He's got a thick neck. Yeah. He's like one of the strongest people that there is, but he's super big yeah like strong people are just big because there's a lot of muscle in there there's a lot going on underneath that skin like you don't understand and people are so mad and it's like why is nothing ever good enough right (laughs) why is like like the way that you reacted to all these people is the way everybody's been oh yeah look yeah perfect beautiful love this art everything is great fat fat you know and he's the only one that's been called out and there's like 10 of these character photos out there but that's the only one that's drawing backlash i love him and it just threw it just threw me straight back into the whole fat face thing god because notice there's a similar key phrase here it's fat yep (laughs) and it's just like come on (sighs) so anyway i'm glad you're digging this art I I think God of War has always led some of the, like, character, like, artistic style look stuff. Yeah. And the guy that does all these people here at this studio, man, he's fucking good. I love yeah. all their armors, and they're yes. all so different. And they're all so detailed. Like, the, <gasps> like, I can zoom in on this thing and just kind of stare at it forever, you know? Dude, Sindri's is, like, my favorite. It's all so cool. It's so beautiful. So anyway, that, that's my other fat Sony. I'm pissed off about that thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know who's a fat character that everybody loves? Speaking of fat fuckers. <laughs> Speaking of fat fuckers. <laughs> I've been playing the new WarioWare game. Oh shit, is that out? It is out on Switch now and it is really fun it is so much fun it's dude the wario games are good they're so good and it's just it's basically the same concept as smooth moves and they just have created all of their mm, okay so they have (laughs) the same mini games in some parts but they're like updated and different and they just have more oomph to them like there's more things you can do like i had described previously i think how there's you play through the levels in this game and you unlock different characters as you go. And each of the different characters has different stuff that they do. So in each level, you have to choose like a stack of characters, like between three to five that you want to use for the mini games. And then the game shuffles them up for you. So like you have <laughs> <Okay>. to <laughs> like just kind of play on your toes and it really makes you think and it makes you have to adapt. And it's, it's really, really fun. And I cannot recommend it enough. It's, if you love WarioWare Smooth Moves, play the new WarioWare, please. Okay. Um, isn't there, like, a demo of it on the Switch store so you can, like, kind of try it out? 
for a I while I know that first. there was a demo um, prior to the release. I don't know if it's still out there or not. It may still be hanging okay. out. You're still sending me pictures of fat men. I love this. I'm sorry. I, I was like, that one didn't do it good enough. But this one, it's, <laughs> yeah. he's a big boy. <laughs> he's a big boy. <laughs> yeah. I bet Wario is strong. He can Dude, lift some good stuff. Wario is so strong. Uh, he picks up his motorcycle and throws it at you in Smash. So Yeah. All right. See, that's peak physical form, you guys. Dude, you cannot fuck with Wario. Look at him. That's a... Uh, he's got what I would call dad muscles you know yes i love that yeah he's got them dad muscles hang on <laughs> there you go look at that boy look at him <laughs> built like For a real. bomb like look at those arms those arms could probably crush you <laughs> like i think I... wario wins hands down in a contest between any of the the mario brothers oh yeah he could crush you with that nose by itself waluigi's got the the length but wario he got the strength yeah <laughs> Wa waluigi got the length wario got the strength oh wait a minute hold up hold up this is this is just for you you listeners may get this i don't know <laughs> <laughs> see see that's what's under all the fat that you just don't understand <laughs> I hate this. It's like I love sh it. Shredded Wario. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love it. It's so funny. Oh wait. God. No wait. That's a bad one. That's <laughs> that's the better one. Emoji there right go. there. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> the last one I played, there was one on the Wii U that like I got to play a demo of, and I thought it was really cool, but I never bought it because you kind of needed to play it with people. Yeah. And I never got really the people to play it with, so I never played it. And I've I've kind of missed out on a lot of the Wario stuff for a long time. Man, when you come over next, we should play some WarioWare because it's like, really I know the fun. games are so good. Yeah, it's it's fun when you have a crowd of people too, because you get to like pass around the Wiimote and it's just like so intense and you have See, to like go that's, fast and that's what I want. So that's why I didn't buy it, you know? Yeah. So yeah, we need to make like a game night of this, I think. Yes, for, for sure. sure. Okay, well, you wanna, you wanna pack on some pounds, get that strength. Let's get ready to win this strongman contest. All right, guys, please tell your friends about us. Help us grow this audience. Go out and find you somebody who's looking for a PS5 and say, "Hey, you wanna know some people that know some of the shit about the PS5? Go listen to them. They're over there at that Yim Tope." And then. Have them subscribe to us on all their favorite platforms so they never miss an episode. And they can listen to us rant every single Monday. Because we release Monday every time. The Yimtope Guarantee. We hold very strongly to our Yimtope Guarantees. And we hope that you appreciate those. And if you do, and you want to give us a little gold star for that, go on out to Apple Podcasts. Give us five of those bad boys. That would really help us out so much to be on everybody's Monday. And while you're out there on the internet, you can find us and friend us on each and every social media. We are at YMBTOAP. It stands for You Must Be Thinking of Another Podcast. You can find us there on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Thank you guys so much for joining us last weekend on Twitch. It was a good time as always. And thank you specifically to our patrons for supporting us. You guys really keep the lights on. You are the lifeblood of this podcast. You keep us moving forward. And if you want to give us a topic suggestion and you can't drop it in the Discord because you're not a patron, you could email us at yimtope at gmail.com. We want that listener email. Go ahead and send us your thoughts on Sony. Do you like Fat Thor? Do you like fat character design in general? Do you think fat character is the peak character? And as always, our theme song is The Green Reaper Blows the Horn by Farage. Please check him out on YouTube. Go give him all kinds of love for all the brilliant work that he does. And he shares that there for you guys to enjoy. And as always, thanks for listening. And tune in next time to get the answer to that burning question. When am I going to get a Wario Land game? It's been a while since I've had one of those. One more important sound we wanted you to hear. They were like, hey, will the PS5 do backwards compatibility? And he went, <laughs> why? He was like, have you seen, have you seen Gran Turismo 1 on the PlayStation? 
it's disgusting. Why would anybody want to go back to that when they could have Gran Turismo 7? Okay. And it's like, you don't understand what people want from games, then. No. I'm willing to look at that ugly game if it brings me joy of a time long gone by. Sometimes you just want to look at a pair of polygon titties. 